Examples of outside activities which must be reviewed and approved include such activities as the following. Being employed or compensated by any other entity. Active in any other business including part-time, evening or weekend employment. Serving as an officer, director, partner, etc. in any other entity. Ownership interest in any non-publicly traded company or other private investments, or any public speaking or writing activities. Written approval for any of the above activities is to be obtained by an employee before undertaking any such activity so that a determination may be made that the activities do not interfere with any of the employee's responsibilities at employer and any conflicts of interests in such activities may be addressed. The above shall not be applicable to the members of the board and to businesses and associates managed by employer or where the company has fiduciary responsibility. 5.8 Probationary Period All appointments into the company will be made subject to a probationary period of 3 to 6 calendar months. After 3 months a review meeting will take place between the post holder and their line manager to discuss progress. At the end of the probationary period, and subject to a satisfactory report by the appropriate head of section or line manager, employees will be notified in writing that they have successfully completed their probationary period. During probation period, the immediate supervisor shall evaluate the performance of the employee to decide whether to confirm the employee. If the employee is not confirmed within probation period, the probation may be extended automatically. An employee may be terminated during the probation period by a decision of the competent authority if it ascertains that the employee is not competent for the post, or unable to perform the duties of the post to which he is appointed, or due to unsatisfactory performance. The decision of the competent authority in this regard must be reasoned. If the employee is recruited from outside the UAE and has resigned during the probation period or prior to the completion of one year of service, he must refund all relocation allowance, including air tickets for his family members, as well as temporary accommodation charges, if any. 5.9 Employment of Relatives Department heads must not employ relatives in the same department or direct supervisory line relationship. Also, employees must not be involved in decisions on employment, transfer or promotion related to any of these relatives. 6. Induction Policy all new employees must be given timely induction training. This training is regarded as a vital part of staff recruitment and integration into the working environment. This policy, associated procedures, and guidelines define the company's commitment to ensure that all staff is supported during the period of induction, to the benefit of the employee and company alike. 6.1 AIM it is the aim of the company to ensure that staff induction is dealt with in an organized and consistent manner, to enable staff to be introduced into a new post and working environment quickly, so that they can contribute effectively as soon as possible. This induction policy, associated procedures, and guidelines aim to set out general steps for managers and staff to follow during the induction process. It is expected that all managers and staff will adhere to this policy. The company expects that the implementation of good induction practice by managers supervisors will enable new employees to settle into the company quickly and become productive and efficient members of staff within a short period of time. Ensure that new entrants are highly motivated and that this motivation is reinforced. Assist in reducing staff turnover absenteeism and poor performance generally. Assist in developing a management style where the emphasis is on leadership. Ensure that employees operate in a safe working environment. Will reduce costs associated with repeated recruitment, training, and lost production. The induction training program will cover the following, at the minimum. Conduct an ethics. Company policies and procedures. IT security and cyber crime risks including phishing attacks and other fraud risks. Anti-money laundering and compliance policies and procedures. Continued training and competency requirements. 6.2 Companies Commitment. The Company Human Resources Department will issue guidelines to familiarize managers and staff with the induction process. Maintain and update the induction policy. Provide a checklist for managers and staff to follow during the induction period. 
Ensure there is effective monitoring of the induction process particularly in the first three months. Deal with any problems promptly providing an efficient service for both managers and staff. Review all policy, procedure, and guideline documents on a regular basis. Provide relevant formal training courses necessary to assist the induction process. 6.3 Joining Formalities HR will email the employee handbook and organizational chart to the new employee on the first day of employment in order to ensure that they have knowledge of their job duties, entitlements, and code of conduct applicable to employer. The line manger should provide the employee with the job description of the post appointed for. 6.4 Guidelines for Line Managers Starting a new job is a demanding and often stressful experience. Apart from the obvious challenge of tackling new tasks, there is also the need to become accustomed to a new organization, a new environment, and new colleagues. The purpose of induction is to support new employees during this difficult period and to help them become fully integrated into the company as quickly and as easily as possible. Induction has benefits for all involved in the process. Employees who settle quickly into the company will become productive and efficient at an early stage and in turn will experience feelings of worth and satisfaction. 6.5 Induction Checklist A checklist of information for induction managers should use with new staff as part of their induction program within the first two weeks of employment. Health and safety items should be identified immediately. The new employee should be asked to tick each subject as he has been informed about it and sign the end of the form. The manager then sends the form to the HR department for inclusion in the employee's personnel file. Induction checklist is attached in Anaxur. 6.6 First Day of Employment HRD preparations should be made for the arrival of the new entrant well in advance. For example, advance arrangements should be made to provide desk, equipment, access cards etc and to introduce them to their new workplace and colleagues at the earliest opportunity an introductory talk will be appropriate at this time and can be combined with the provision of general information and exchanging any necessary documentation this talk should be as brief as possible because the employee is unlikely to be receptive to detailed information at this stage and should be conducted by someone who is well prepared and has sufficient time available Managers supervisors should refer to the induction checklist and use it as a basis for discussion thus ensuring all documentation is complete. A formal 5 to 10 minutes introductory meeting with the executive management committee members during the first two weeks. In addition, a tour of the workplace should be arranged for the new entrant allowing the company to be viewed as a whole and the recruit to see where he fits into the organization. 6.7 Internal Transfer Internal candidates, already employed by employer, will be given priority for any internal vacancies, whether they nominate themselves or are nominated by their line managers. 6.8 Job Description, Role Profile Department heads should design their jobs around key business objectives and processes to ensure that they cover all tasks and that there is no duplication between jobs. Department heads, in Chief Operation Officer Nation with HRD must develop a job description for all posts and update them continuously according to new developments and circumstances. Organizational units must ensure that all employees receive updated copies of their job descriptions stating clearly the purpose of job and corresponding accountabilities. The job description is the basis for employment, career path, performance appraisal, training development opportunities planning and other related procedures. 6.9 Job Evaluation all positions within employer shall be evaluated through employer annual assessment process in order to decide on the comparative value of the position. The evaluation shall be the basis on which categories and grades will be assigned to reflect the job requirements and not only the competences or experience of incumbents.